Welcome to another edition of All About the Grace. I'm Bridget Ayer, your host, and I'm here with Julie Savitsky. Savitsky, yes. I said it right? Yep. <laughs> the founder and executive director of Reigns of Grace Therapeutic Riding Center. And I have this beautiful wind on me <laughs> to keep the horses cool. Yes. So um, what is what is Reigns of Grace? Uh, Reigns of Grace, is, we're a therapeutic riding center, and we uh, see children from ages two to six years old and that have uh, disabilities can be emotional, physical, um, and we use the horses as therapy to help them achieve more independence and function in their lives and uh, uh, skills of riding a horse. So, are you a horse person? Did you always, you know, have you always been into horses, as, or is this something that God just had a lightning bolt and told <laughs> yeah. you to get into horses? What, which is it? Uh, both, actually. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. Let's hear that. So the uh, it start it did start when I was a child, and and I uh, we lived in a neighborhood, and I kept bugging my parents for a horse, and they said we couldn't afford one, and we uh, couldn't afford to to board one. So. I thought, well, if that's all there is, I'm sure I could figure out a way around that. Those so, two small problems, you know. Yeah, two, when you're determined and 10 years old, you I were guess, 10. 10 years old. Yeah, okay. Which plays a significant role in the next part of the story, actually. But um, so I found a pony in the paper for $25, and I had babysitting money and chore money that I had saved up. I was pretty impressed with that. <laughs> <laughs> we did this on had, Catholic Radio Indy, and I was pretty <laughs> impressed that she raised the money to get a horse, but I, go on, I was a pony. Determined, a pony, yes. And back then at, you know, 25 bucks, it, it was probably an ancient pony, but... Uh -huh. It's okay. It, it, it counted. It okay. It did count. And I had made arrangements with a family that lived at the edge of our neighborhood to, uh, in exchange for work and cleaning the stalls to keep the, the pony there. So right at my 10th birthday, I announced to my parents, I didn't ask, I announced <laughs> that I was going to get the pony because I could afford it and I had a place to keep it. The two things that my parents said. The criteria they gave you, right? Gave so I, I did what they said. And so my, they rolled their eyes a little bit and realized that the pony that I had found in the paper was probably not a, a good uh, fit. And so we did get a, a pony uh Scout was his name, little black and white pinto pony. Looks a lot like Pearly, actually, only smaller. And um, so it, it kind of started there. And, and I've been with horses ever since. And then when, uh, fast forward to 1999, and my daughter was 10, and it was a Monday night, and she asked, when could we buy Paloma, which was a horse at a nearby farm that I had been working with. And I said, well, honey, we can't afford her. Same and story, right? Same exact story. I <laughs> don't have a place. Don't have, can't, yeah. can't afford. It's, a, it's really expensive to have yep. a horse. Yep. So They're, when your daughter was 10. And I told her that the same things that I was told when I was 10. But I said, I'll tell you what, you pray to God. And when he wants us to have a horse, he'll provide one. And so with the, you know, complete innocence of a 10-year-old, a a she said, okay. And started, you know, her prayer as I was walking out of the room. And I went out in the hallway and I looked at the ceiling and I said, it's your problem now, big guy. <laughs> and I, oh, yeah. You, you tell God it's his problem. Yeah, he usually yeah, does something yeah. about it. You call him big guy and you point your finger in his <laughs> face. What? I'm not sure. I wasn't thinking, I guess. And so I thought that was the end of that. And the next morning. The uh, next morning. The next morning, Tuesday morning at 830, uh, the phone rings. And it's Mike, the guy that owns the farm where Paloma was. And he said, you know, we're selling the farm, and you've helped us out a lot in the past, and, well, we want you to have Paloma for free. We want to give you Paloma. Yeah, papers and all. And she was a very fancy Arabian, well-bred, wow. very expensive mare. So it wasn't just any mare, it was like the best. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> That's God, you know, he always gives you, like, the best. <laughs> right, ten times, ten times, yeah, he was, it was, uh, and it was the horse that she prayed for. It wasn't just like, just give me, I'll take anything. She wanted Paloma. And now, the name Paloma, doesn't that mean something? Because that's an unusual name. I'd never heard of it before I met you. Yes, it does. It, in fact, after we told the kids that we were going to get this horse, and her full name is La Paloma, L-A, and then Paloma, and she came home from school and she said, oh my gosh, do you know what her, mean, her name means in Spanish? And I said, no, I, I don't speak any Spanish. And she said it means dove or Holy Spirit. In Spanish, wow. Which, of course, I looked up. <laughs> Is yeah, that really true? That can't possibly be true, <laughs> and it does say that um, uh, online, and of course, that's... I'm getting chills. That, that's the truth if it's on the internet, right? Of course. But, it's, but that's what her name was, so that's not only did we get the horse she prayed for, 
but under those circumstances and for free. And then I had a free place to keep her because I was working at another farm and my boss, um, he said I could exchange, you know, work for board, just like I did when I was 10. And so within 10 hours of challenging God, he, he gave us this horse under those circumstances. So I knew then, and I, I kind of joke about the line from Blues Brothers, mm -hmm. you know, on a mission from God. But I knew I was on a mission from God. I just didn't know what it was at that time. And Reigns of Grace, when I actually, I, a friend of mine just gave me a text and said, Hey, okay. Bridget, have you ever heard of this? You need to get in touch with Julie and interview yeah. her on Catholic Radio. And I thought, well, well, tell me what it is. And she yeah. says, it's Reigns of Grace. And I thought, all about the grace, Reigns <laughs> yeah. of Grace. I said, I have got to <laughs> meet. You've got a yeah, story. So yeah, how did you come be. up with the name? I love it. Uh, we... Um, we were initially we were Beamer Paloma Center, uh -huh. which was Beamer was well, Paloma, obviously the first horse, and then we were giving enough, given another horse named Viking Sunrise uh, shortly after Paloma. So we started with the two horses, and when we became a not-for-profit, we had to, we wanted to change the name, and we wanted to be a little bit clearer mm -hmm. about what we were about. Your mission, uh, exactly, and that we were on a mission from God, and this was all driven by God. And um, so we kind of sat around, my husband and I, and went through the Bible and tried words, you know, love, hope, faith, and that kind of thing. And then, and then the reins of grace and the reign, uh, R-E-I-N-S, not that kind or mm -hmm. not a king's reign, but uh, the reign is a piece of a horse equipment that you use to connect with the horse and to, to communicate with the horse. And I thought that was... Uh, and grace is, you know, what we feel that God has blessed us with, with everything out here and that, um, you know, kind of getting something that you, you don't deserve, but God showers his mercy and his grace upon us. And, and so that connection of grace to the horse that God provided, it just seemed to all fit. So. so what exactly do you do here? Now, I know that there's some different, how many horses do you have? Because there's some beautiful horses here. So, and then they're, they're scratching <laughs> each other's back back here. <laughs> yeah, I think one to, was like tying his oh, shoe oh, over there. <laughs> I know, that's getting a little scratching. And, and um, well, we have five horses here now. Um, Paloma, the original horse, she's working for Jesus now. So she went home. Um, and Beamer is still here. He's in the front. We're all working for Jesus, whether yeah, we're here or somewhere that's, else, that's right? You can't, point. can't really get out of that. <laughs> that's a good point. That's what, it's yeah. a good thing, yeah. though, right? Yeah, she's up close and personal with him up there. So, And uh, Beamer, the second horse, he's up in the front pasture. He, you saw him on the way in. Yes, I did. And then we've got Sadie and Dundee and Nellie and Pearlie in the corner. So we've got five horses here in the program. And when the, the children come out one at a time, mm -hmm. so every lesson is... One on group. one. Yes. Yes. And depending on whatever their developmental issue is mm -hmm. or whatever they need, you kind of pair them up with the horse that Correct. will work out the best. Correct. So g give me Perfect. an example because Perfect. people that don't know yeah. about special needs or developmental right. delays or whatever How does that have work? no idea what the connection is between horses and, and, um, and, human, and, development. and human development. Yeah, yeah that's, it's a, that's a great question. And that's kind of the, the in the nutshell, uh, the way a horse moves is almost identical to the way a person moves. And so when the, a person is on that horse, they're getting the same movement through their hips and legs and spine that you would get if you were walking. So some of these children that are not walking at a, the developmentally appropriate stage, mm -hmm. they need a, a hint, a boost, a, um, you know, that, that type of thing to tell the body what to do. Mm -hmm. So when you put them on the horse, it, the movement of the horse kind of tells the body how to shift the weight and how to hold your head up properly and your shoulders back and all the things that we have to do to walk. And so my best example is a little boy that had Down syndrome um, that rode here a number of years ago and he was three and physically he was able to walk. He had all the parts in, were in the right place mm -hmm. but for whatever reason there was a disconnect between his brain and his body and he would not walk and they tried everything and finally a, um, either a, a therapist or a doctor said well try that horse stuff because mm -hmm. I've heard that it can help so they came out here and we put him on the horse which he loved and the, after the first ride when I took him off the horse his legs were 
doing this in the air. And we all kind of went, oh, you know, I mean, I knew that something's happening here. Yeah, that quickly, that quickly. And same it, day? Same day, same wow. day after 30 minutes on the horse. Because <laughs> I know sometimes therapy, and not that it, it works the same day every time, <laughs> yeah, but no. sometimes therapy, depending on what it is, it can take, you know, a long, long months long and, and maybe even years for it to yes. have any effect, fruition or <laughs> effect. It, it, it's true. And he didn't, he didn't, I didn't put him on the ground and have him walk, but it was just kind of in the air. He was kind of following Making the that motion connection. from the horse. Exactly. And his body hadn't had that three-dimensional movement before. And so it, but it actually took four rides before he was, we, with assistance, he would walk, you know, as he was learning, you know, strengthening, but he would, um, hi Nelly. Um, whoa, Nelly. Okay. Whoa, I couldn't Nelly. resist that. I, I, I had to do this. This is Nelly. I, I'm sorry. Whoa, Nelly. And she has a cute little mustache Oh, you're right so there. cute. I don't know how to pet a horse. Oh, is this okay? That's just like a dog. I wish I had something to yeah. give her, but yeah, I got nothing. So that's, she likes the attention and the scratching, um, but so that's so that was a kind of a record, you know, four four lessons for his body and brain to make the connection, and then don't be nasty. <laughs> this, this is our. Do you talk to horses? Oh yes, I we talk do. to dogs. Yes, it's okay to talk to Absolutely. horses. Absolutely, not understand the exact words, but they understand the inflection and the tone and what kind of mood you're in, and if they're in trouble or if they're a good boy. Same with the horses. Right. And, they, and they understand the words. We say walk on. We teach the kids to tell the horses to walk on. And most of the time, when if, if the child is learning still how to say that, um, if the instructor says, okay, so tell Nelly to walk on, the horse hears my voice say walk on, and we're waiting for the child to say it. But Nelly hears it, and she knows that means walk on. So she starts to move. And we have to kind of hold her back because they say, no, no, Nelly, we're waiting for the rider to say it, you know, but uh, so, so they understand a lot. And there's something with animals that people connect with, even with dogs, you know, with therapy dogs, you know, with people yes. coming home from, um, you know, Iraq or yes. you know, from war. Certain and then it, it seems like that it, they can help them kind of deal with the post-traumatic stress. So there's something with animals that helps us yes. kind of progress. It's, I, I read something one time about that very thing uh, in dealing with people that have uh, autism mm -hmm. and that, that the animals are very two-dimensional and we're three-dimensional in terms of your emotions and your feelings. A horse, you always, you always know where you are with the horse. and They love you no matter you what. <laughs> or, or not. Well, and Unless they, you're viewing bad stuff yes, to them, right? Uh, yes. And if they <laughs> then say, they let you know. Oh, they will. <laughs> and they'll stay away from you. Right. If you have fear or anxiety or anger, they, any of those negative, strong emotions, if you just went out here and tried to approach a horse with all that, even though your face might be smiling, horsey, <laughs> they know. inside you have all this turmoil, they'll back away from you. And that's, in fact, horses are used in... Uh, uh, equine facilitated psychotherapy um, for that reason because they're almost like a mirror of your insides mm. so they don't like people we I'll talk to you and you might have an expression on your face but your body might be doing this <laughs> and so we know I do that sometimes <laughs> yeah, right right and 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 that can be confusing for somebody who's on the spectrum or a young person that doesn't have all those social nuances down yet and they they go what I don't know I, I sense you're angry but you're smiling at me and mm -hmm. your words are appropriate but boy I feel so it's very confusing for so for kids that are very sensitive to that especially children on the spectrum mm -hmm. they're aware of all that and they don't know what to do with it and with a horse they it's very clear-cut the, the horse is going to be with you or not and and so that's a great transition for these children to learn socialization and getting along with another being and then take those skills and transition them to people. So it's it's scientific actually. Yeah, and I know that I know that that you have done quite a bit of research in ad in addition to all your practical experience and just you know it works, but there is science behind this. So you're not you're not just <laughs> Not just making yes. this up. Right, right. I think right. you just got a kiss there. I did. I did. She's she's our most playful and uh, most demanding. So what I think is really cool for you and and kind of cool for you know sharing with others is just really using your gifts and talents 
for God. It, it's not, it's not, hello, uh, okay. it's not just uh, a, it's not a job. No, You're really no. doing this for God. Yes. Yes. And and how what, how has it impacted you? I mean, I'm sure it's impacted the people that you know the the students or the children and the parents. Okay. Maybe yeah. talk about that, and and then maybe how it's impacted your faith life. I th- I, it just uh, you know it it's life is uh, can be a struggle on a good day for anybody raising children. It can be difficult, and I think learning to I don't know, surrender to God and to accept. Uh, what what we have and just know that somehow God's going to turn it into a benefit or a, a positive whether it's for you personally or somebody that you encounter whether it's the family members a child uh, my own family members to see the families that come out here and and to see their joy and their complete trust in God even though you know that can be hard sometimes for people if you have challenging circumstances mm-hmm and you know people want to say well why would god allow this and why did you let that happen and are you being punished because of this and people you know from the old testament you know people had sin that's why they had disabilities or whatever yeah exactly we know a lot more now but even when you not everybody gets healed not everybody got healed in the bible right and how what do you do with that you know, right. as, a, as a parent, how do you get through that? You know, you have to have a strong faith. You have to have a strong faith. And, and it's, I've learned more from the families. And I, you know, when I initially started this, coming from this, like a Christ-centered foundation, mm-hmm. I learned more from the families that came here about faith and trust and, and how to strengthen my faith and to... Um, you know, to put it in action, and you know, we we hear every Sunday or, or every time we go to mass, for mm-hmm. that matter. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, to serve one another, and um, I think somebody told me not too long ago about joy, mm-hmm. Jesus, others, yourself, and I'd never heard that before, and I just can't stop thinking about that because that's really. Um, if I could do it over again, I might even change the name of Reigns of Grace to, <laughs> to joy. Reigns of Joy because it's if you put Jesus first and you take care of those that need the help and then worry about yourself, you don't have to worry about yourself because it all it all works you know, out. Right. God has a plan. Right. So what about volunteer opportunities? Sorry. He wants to volunteer. Uh, yeah, she he wants volunteers. She's, I know, she's going <laughs> she, to be working I mean, today. Yeah, she's going to have a, some lessons this afternoon. So people can can donate. Um, yes. And that's the and volunteer, so they can donate time or talent correct. or treasure or, yep. for um, for your ministry yes. slash nonprofit. Yes. Um, what kind of volunteer things can they do? They, we have a, we have everybody from a sidewalker to a horse handler to a barn buddy. So okay. people that maybe are not as comfortable around the horses or don't have as much experience, we have something needs to be cleaned every single day, mm-hmm. everywhere, you mm-hmm. know, all year round. We have the sensory garden that always needs tending to, whether it's pruning bushes or um, pulling weeds. If you want to brush the horses, you can you can do that. You can clean the stalls. I mean, there's you can paint things. There's all kinds of things to do. It's a constant seven day a week um, challenge. And it's a beautiful. I mean, it's a beautiful facility. And and Thank actually, you. and I'll I want to have you just tell the quick story about the other kind of miracle. I mean, there's just kind of been one miracle after the next yes. with this whole thing. And and that's how it is when you're with you know really with God, right. you're just kind of praying, trusting, yes. you don't know how things are going to work out, but no. just before we got recording, Julie was telling that. me about basically getting free stalls. Right. It, we uh, When we did the plans and wrote up the, the price of this in, indoor uh, facility, uh, I didn't think we could afford the stalls, and so we talked about it with the builder, and I said, let's you know, make the footprint for the stalls, but we'll have to hold off on those until we could raise the money and that type of thing. So we were in agreement and we sat at the kitchen table and signed the contracts, you know, with each other and everything was fine. And then the builder built, built everything, everything and then was up. And then he came to me one day and he said, he goes, I don't really know how to explain this. He said, but your stalls just came in. <laughs> and I said, 
I, we didn't order them because I can't afford <laughs> That's them. That's not in the budget. <laughs> it's not. It was not in the budget. Yeah. And I had, we had the bottom line, and that was it. He said, I don't know. He said, I don't know what happened. He said, we got the contracts out. He said, look right here. And in the top line, it said, you know, 150 by 70 pole barn with four, you know, stalls like this. And they're really nice stalls. I mean, they've got the nice, you know. Yep, nice door. Yeah, <laughs> nice door. These are nice stalls expensive. I've ever seen. And you know, they are they are expensive. The best. You and know, they, God always does the best, did. right? <laughs> La Paloma, who is a very well-bred, you know, mare, and then and then there were this. So we just kind of stood there and looked at each other, and he said, I, he said, I know we weren't supposed to get stalls, and he said, but it's right there in the contract. We we signed off on it, so they built them. So, so God is good, right? Oh, always. So um, now let's see, if people want to find out more, they can um, go to your webpage. What, what is that? The website is www.reinsofgrace.com. Reinsofgrace.com, yeah, I and, think. And thank, thank you, you, Julie. Plus. Taking the time. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>